Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Psych Plus M1 GPS computer and the V2 Outfront bike mount. Cycling computers generally fall into two categories, non-GPS and GPS. GPS computers provide positional data that makes it easy to analyze your rides and compare it with others. However, they're a lot more expensive than the non-GPS variations. That's why we're excited to review this Psych Plus M1 GPS computer today, which is really affordable for a GPS computer. We also have their out front mount, which is a Garmin compatible mount that makes it really clean and easy to install on your handlebars. Packaging wise, they're both really simple. Cardboard boxes, white and black graphics, Psych Plus logo with a really nice representation of the full screen and all the data on it. You have some basic specifications here and a QR code for the associated app. The out front mount is similarly designed, really simple white and black. There is a little bit of loss in translation as you can see on the specs. Uh, this says suitable pipe diameter, which really should say handlebar diameter. Also, you'll see uh, Steven at Psych Plus is gonna get all your after sales emails or warranty questions, which is kind of a funny email to have instead of just warranty. And they do have a one year warranty, which is nice to have even though they're a kind of Amazon and smaller brand. Now let's go over the specs while I take it out of the box. So retail price on the M1 GPS computer is $49.99, which is really impressive. So it undercuts a lot of GPS computers. The mount itself is also really cheap. This is $9.99, which is quarter the price of traditional out front mounts. Go ahead and take this out. The M1 computer has a 2.9 inch FSTN LCD screen, really large for the price. It's non-touch monochromatic. It has ANT plus sensor connectivity, which is really nice to have. So you can connect your speed, cadence, heart rate, and power meter directly to it. It has a Bluetooth connection for an associated app. It has a 1,100 milliamp battery built in with a 30 hour runtime and USB rechargeable here on the back. It has a Garmin compatible mount, which is really cool, especially at this price point. And it's IPX6 waterproof. Now the Z2 mount, also really affordable. As I mentioned, $9.99, which is really unheard of. It is plastic with a Garmin compatible mount and a really interesting security feature that lets you run a bolt through the back and into the back of the GPS computer, which is something we haven't seen before. It is a little bit bulky because it's plastic, but has a simple hinge design with a one bolt to attach your handlebar. Now in terms of what comes in the box, with the mount, you get the mount itself and the Garmin Punk, Punk already in here. You get a little Allen wrench, a bolt and two washers to use both on the hinge and on that little security bolt, which is what this additional bolt is. For the computer, you get obviously the computer, really big screen, especially at this price point. You get a handlebar mount, which is a traditional gasket on the back and then two O-ring design uh, with a couple extra, with one extra in case you lose one. You also get a micro USB charging cable to charge a device, a basic instruction manual, which is fairly easy to use, but uh, could be a lot clearer. Well, that's about it, so pretty simple overall. So now let's take a look at the weight of the computer and mount. So we just take the computer by itself. That comes in at 78 grams, so very light. You also have the handlebar mount with two O-rings, which should be pretty light. That comes in at only 10 grams. And then the V2 out front plastic mount with the bolt already on the hinge, that comes in at 32. It's a very competitive overall package. So now let's take a look at the fit and finish of the Psych Plus M1 computer and the Z2 mount. Now right out of the box, it's really impressive how large this is. At 2.9 inches, this is larger than a lot of more expensive Garmin units or other computers on the market. It's actually larger than the Garmin 830. It has a pretty typical bezel on the side three physical buttons on the bottom and the Psych Plus logo here. You also have the Psych Plus logo on the front for a little advertisement, but pretty stealthy. It's not really in your face. 
you have the three buttons. They're actually labeled here on the top and also labeled with these little imprinted uh, symbols on there. Now what's really cool about this is that even though it's such a budget computer, it actually has a Garmin mount. So if you look underneath, this is a standard Garmin compatible quarter turn mount. Uh, works well with their mount, locks it into place and doesn't really jiggle. It's fairly thin as well for the computer. Now being a black and white non-touch screen, you would expect it uh, to be nice and small. It's also fairly lightweight as well. You have a USB charging port back here with this nice protective cover. So nice package overall, looks a lot more premium when you see it. This is actually a matte screen as well. So you can see there's no reflections here as you would have with typical ones. And that helps really reduce the reflections while you're riding. You get the standard handlebar mount, but I don't really recommend this. This is good for putting it on your stem, but if you want to mount it on a handlebar, I definitely recommend buying a out front mount. This is their Z2 mount, which is only $10, which is really impressive. Now, because it's so cheap, it is plastic, and you can see it's very bulky with these little structures here, and it flexes as well. So despite how thick it is, it's still more flexible than a standard aluminum mount. I don't really recommend this, as I would prefer a a metal mount which doesn't vibrate and even could offer a dual side configuration. So this is cheap, works with any Garmin device, but if you have the budget, I definitely recommend spending a little bit more and getting a metal variation. What's really cool about this though is that security device. So if you were to lock this into place, you can then put a bolt right through the middle and you can see on the computer you have a threaded hole. So that makes it a little bit harder to steal. Obviously if you have a little Allen wrench, you could pop it off, but if you had a thief walking by your computer, they couldn't just rotate it and run off. So it's a nice security device. Uh, it's very creative. And when you have it mounted on the out front mount, it actually works pretty well. As I said, it does vibrate just because of the weight of this and the plastic construction though. So now let's set up the computer. Here I have it mounted on the out front mount. You can see because it's plastic, this mount actually flexes even though it's secure on the handlebar. Uh, the way it's designed just flexes. So I'd really recommend avoiding this mount and going for an aluminum mount. It will cost a little bit more. This is $10, which is really cheap, but I think it's worth paying a little bit extra. Now, configuration-wise, you're pretty limited on this computer, but we'll go ahead and go over the menu. So if you hold the bottom right button, you enter the configuration menu. The simple display means you don't get a lot of uh, UI here. Everything's predefined, so it's really confusing. So C2 is the first configuration menu. And then the icon indicates that we're doing the signal connection for any ANT plus sensors. Uh, while it's blinking, it means you're on this page, but active. If you want to change it, you left click. And now it's automatic in the search. It'll time out in 10 seconds. And I have a cadence sensor that you can see it picks up. I also have a Brighton heart rate monitor, which doesn't seem to pick up, but hopefully other heart rate monitors would connect. Now let's look at the other options. You have C3. Now this is the wheel diameter. Really confusing without a label, of course. This is only used if you have a speed sensor to compute the distance more accurately. I've been using the GPS signal and it's been pretty good, except for uh, forested areas where it might cut out. But again, just millimeter distance, you could look up this value to enter changes, you left click, and then right click to change the number. So pretty simple. And then C4 is the time setting. Again, really confusing. This is relative to GMT. So left click to modify it and it'll stop blinking. Right click to change value. So California here is negative eight. If you happen to be in a time zone that has a half hour increment, you're kind of out of luck. This is the hour offset from GMT. Confirm it with the left button and when it'll start blinking again, that means it's set. C5 lets you set the speed units. You can do miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Again, to change it, you click, it'll stop blinking, right click to change the value. So we'll put miles per hour, confirm it with the left button. And then C6 is the temperature display. So Fahrenheit or centigrade, left click to change, right click to cycle through the option. So centigrade or Fahrenheit left click to confirm. And finally you have C7. This is a recovery, factor recovery. If you left click, it'll activate it. And if you right click, it will supposedly do something. I found that it actually doesn't reset anything. 
my odometer is the same and all my sensors are still the same. So you probably have to just remove the battery or let the battery completely die for this to fully reset. To exit the configuration menu, you hold the button and now you enter the main screen. So really simple GPS, really big display with 2.9 inches. Uh, the top 50% is your speed. The bottom left corner is the sensor display and you can see it would be heart rate monitor here, cadence, and then the power meter. If you don't have those sensors connected, you're out of luck. It just shows you a blank area. So it would have been nice if it would reconfigure automatically, but it doesn't do that. You have auxiliary information here. So it's time or distance. You can cycle through a couple options, altitude and ascent, or odometer and percent gradient. So there's also a fourth screen, which is the average screen. It shows you the average of everything with the altitude and gradient shown for the auxiliary information, which is a little bit strange. I've never wanted to look at average altitude. If you click again, you can show the maximum of everything again. Now, you can't configure the grids and you can't change anything else. So what you see is what you get. And that's one limitation of this kind of display and the uh, cheaper GPS computers such as this. To start a ride, you just left click on the bottom left button and you see the play icon. Now it's recording. It auto pauses when you're not moving and you can manually pause it by uh, clicking the bottom left button again. If you want to save your ride, you have to remember to hold the middle button until that icon goes away. So it's really easy to forget to record your ride. Otherwise, there's no beeping, there's no automatic save. There's actually no ketones or anything, which is really strange. And finally, you can show, uh, you can change the number of laps. So if you're in activity, the bottom middle button will change the number of lap and it'll display here. Now you can't actually display anything about the lap, so it's a little bit uh, less useful. So you can't actually see how long you went for your last lap, your average speed or anything. It's all for post-processing. Now one of the biggest issues with this computer is the backlight. As you can see here, it's already on and it's quite bright. There are no controls on brightness, but it has good visibility. The main issue is you can't turn it off. So it's automatically on between 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. Any other time, it will turn on for about five seconds when you press a button. But here, whether you're doing any actions or just have it on, it will be automatically on between these certain time zones. And that can really be distracting when you're riding. And typically you have a button to turn that off, this automatic behavior, but you can't do that here. And it's based on the time zone that's actually in here. The other issue is it's very obvious that this is a cheaper computer by the unevenness of the backlight. You see the little uh, dots here with each lighting element and the fact that it's not shielded. So you can see the edge of there and the edge here when you look at it at certain angles. So definitely one indicator that this is a cheaper unit. Now let's take a look at the app, but let's see wirelessly connect from the computer to your cell phone. Now this app is shared with a couple other computers. So if you scroll down, you'll see the M1 at the bottom. You click connect, it will search for it. You'll actually see a little Bluetooth icon here once it's actually connected on the computer itself. See so it found it and then now that's connected, you see the Bluetooth icons there. Now this app is really basic. So you can go to settings and you can see there's literally one option. You can either do a factory reset or you can update the firmware. And that's about it. You can't even change the units, which is really bizarre. Now the main reason to use this is to sync your workouts. So if you go to your workouts, you can actually upload them automatically to Strava once you link the account. And you can also look at your rides here on the app. Now I found it pretty basic. The elevation seems to be uh, incorrectly listed, at least with this version of the app. You can't really zoom in on the elevation charts. So it's really basic. I don't, I don't really like it. Uh, you can't even see your lap time. So I recommend just using this to auto upload to Strava or to manually upload. I've also found the uploads are very slow. So if you do a longer ride, be prepared to wait a minute or two for it to fully upload. Now let's compare the Psych Plus M1 computer and other computers on the market. Now one of the most popular computer reviews we've done is the Bontrager Ride Time Elite. This is a really compact $70 computer that's a lot smaller than the Psych Plus 2.9 inch, but has similar features. It has Ant Plus connectivity and also has Bluetooth connectivity with compatible Bontrager lights. What's nice about the Elite one, it's really a modern, simple computer, but it's non-GPS. So it's more expensive than the $50 Psych Plus, but lacks the GPS uh, abilities. 
Similar to the Psych Plus, you have a predefined layout of the screen, and you can cycle through uh, data as you would with the Psych Plus. What's nice about the Bondrager, it has more customization than the Psych Plus, which just lets you rotate through a couple screens. With the Bondrager, you can actually adjust what's on the bottom and actually how what's displayed on the top, where with the Psych Plus, everything's predefined. Otherwise, the 2.9 inch screen is really the big feature here and the fact that you get GPS data. So with the Bontrager, it's all real-time data. With the Psych Plus, you can record it, upload to Strava, and still pay less than the Bontrager. Now the more direct comparisons are probably the Garmin units. This is an older Edge 200, and you can see the big difference with the uh, Garmin is the fact that the screen, even though it's not touch screen, has a much more a flexible screen dis design. So instead of this LCD with predefined region, you can see you can actually set up alerts. Uh, you have nice menus with this. Everything is in a predefined spot and even like the configuration menu have to reuse the top lettering. Whereas this one actually has overlays. So that's definitely one big difference here. You don't get the advancement of the Garmin or some of the Garmin features, but you pay a lot less and you can see the big thing here is the screen is so much larger and more affordable than equivalent Garmin. The other affordable computer on the market are the Brightons. So here I have the Brighton 320, which is something we've recently reviewed as well. Here you get GPS connectivity, a lot more flexibility, and that's a big difference here. So it's a glossy screen, as you can see, a better contrast, more adjustability. This one is GPS enabled as well. And the big difference is there's so much configurability with the screen. Uh, with the Psych Plus, you can't do anything. With the Brightons, you get over 100 options. So you can do power meter. It has alerts. It'll automatically tell you to start the ride. Uh, you can change how the power meter data is displayed, the averaging frequency. So a lot more adjustability, but again, more expensive. But the Brighton, where the Brighton is more of a competitor versus the Garmin, I think Psych Plus really beats simple computers like the Bontrager Ride Time. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the M1 computer. What we like about it is that it's very competitively priced. At $50, this is a really cheap computer, and it's very hard to find a GPS computer anywhere in this price range at all. It has a large and easy to read 2.9 inch display, and it has the Garmin quarter turn style mount, which is really nice to see at this price point. That means you can use any out front mount instead of having to use proprietary mounts. Some of the negatives with this computer is the fact that it has minimal customization. That's typical with cheaper computers, but with this, you can't even adjust the grid and you can't move anything around. So there will be some dead space, especially if you don't have a power meter or heart rate monitor connected. It also has a confusing uh, configuration menu. There's no labels, it's just C2, C3 with some numbers. So that could definitely be improved. And probably the biggest issue with this is the auto backlight. It's automatically on between 6 p.m. and 9 a.m and with no user override, so it'll definitely run down the battery and can be distracting. If they added a backlight button, that would really improve the experience. Taking everything into account would give the computer a 7.5 out of 10. As I said, it's a very competitively priced computer. It's not a Garmin replacement, but if you're looking for a cheap computer or a second GPS computer, it's really hard to beat this at $50. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.